Hello and welcome to GRR Armory Long Range Shooting Series. Today in part 5 we are going to go through cartridge selection. We are going to look at the 50 BMG, 408 shy tech 338 Lapua Magnum, 6.5 Creedmoor, 762x51 and 556x45. We are also going to enjoy different uh, scenes from uh, firearm and sniper related movies. And we are also going to bust a couple of uh, Hollywood uh, one mile hits that they are featuring in some of these movies, uh, which are in the end almost impossible to pull off. So let's go ahead and uh, look at what does it take to select the right cartridge for a long range shooting application. Why are we doing this? Because most of the time 5.56 just doesn't send the right message and as much as we love the 5.56, sometimes you need a little more. In order to determine the required cartridge or caliber for our application, we need to answer the following questions. First, what is the maximum distance we want to reach out to? So on the right side, you see in the middle the target and we need to determine what is the maximum range we are interested in. Secondly, we need to know how big is the target zone. We look at this as a circle diameter. For example, what is the minimum size target we want to hit? We can um, measure that in MOA, for example, for the target max range. Third, we need to understand how much penetration and energy do we want to affect on the target. And this is determined by the bullet mass and the retain speed at impact. So depending on the type of target, we may need more uh, energy or more uh, speed. Those two will give us the effect on the target. So sometimes you need more penetration, sometimes you need more expansion. We're going to go through each one uh, in the upcoming slides. Finally, I would like to introduce the fourth question, which is uh, what is our first round hit probability do we want at that distance based on the ideal conditions, which means none to light wind, normal conditions or difficult environmental conditions. Normally, every book covers the first three points and I would like to introduce for those cartridges number four and uh, maybe help you determine what is the best uh, cartridge and the best uh, caliber for your application. If you look on the right side, once we determine the maximum uh, target range, the size and the type of the target, is it static, is it moving, is it soft, medium or hard, we need to understand what probability of hit do we need to have. We need to stay supersonic at the maximum range. Um, supersonic, it's all the way down to Mach 1.2, so 1.2 times the speed of sound. From 1.2 to 1 is the transonic zone, where the bullet goes from supersonic to subsonic. So for most of the bullets, this is an area where um, it's much harder to hit targets because they are becoming uh, slightly harder to predict as far as their trajectory is concerned. And we can determine what ballistic coefficient do we need to achieve that hit probability. We also see on the lower left side an assortment of cartridges starting from the 545 by 39 and going all the way up to the 25 mm, uh, 20 mm and the third one from the right is the 50 BMG. So number 56 is 50 BMG. So anywhere in between there is a quite large assortment of cartridges and it can be rather confusing to know which one works best for your application. So first let's start with the distance. So uh, how far do we want to hit? When we talk long range, we are uh, usually looking beyond 600 yards, so mostly a thousand yards and higher. This is an image uh, from a rifle range I have access to, which has a thousand yards range. And the target we are going to be used throughout this video, it's the MR1 600 yards target, which is using 600 yards competitions. The circles in the middle are uh, six. So the uh, 10 circle has six inches in diameter. Then you have 12, 18, 24 and 36. This completes the black size of the target. And then you have for six points and five points, the 48 and the 60 inch circles in diameter. Um, however, for today, we're going to say that we want to stay inside the 36 inch target zone uh, different distances. If we uh, look even beyond the thousand range, if you think about Hollywood movies and long, very long range uh, shots, 
we can talk about one mile. It seems that Hollywood uh, has this obsession with one mile shot. So if you look in the context of an urban area, one mile, it's about uh, 1800 yards and about 20 blocks. Three quarter miles is about 15 blocks um, or 1350 yards. Half a mile is 10 blocks. Six blocks is 550 yards and three blocks is about 275 yards. For those of us who also use the metric system, one mile is about uh, 1600 meters. Half a mile is about 800 meters and uh, three blocks is about 250 meters. And you can see the other ranges in between. One mile is an extremely long distance if you think about it to place a very small supersonic bullet uh, exactly on target for a very small target. So you can also see um, how does it look like to actually fly over for one mile in an urban environment. To make such a shot at one mile is very difficult, so uh, let's uh, hear it from Mark Wahlberg uh, to tell us what does it take to make a shot at this range. Consider claims that the shot would be taken from beyond a mile. We need you to scout. Tell us how you would do it so we can stop it. I'm not entirely convinced that a shot like this could be made, but let's not take the chance. Your longest shots were never confirmed. That's because the long shots generally go places you wouldn't want to have to go at first to confirm it. Confirmation is the best folks problem. You know what it takes to make a shot at that range? Everything comes into play that far. Humidity, elevation, temperature, wind, spin drift. This is six to ten second flight time, so you have to shoot it where the target is going to be. Even the Coriolis effect, the spin of the earth comes into play. As far as the target size, uh, I'm going to use uh, MOA or shooter's MOA, which is roughly one inch at uh, 100 yards equal uh, approximately one MOA. And again, this is not to dial the shot, but this is more to put the size of the target in relationship to the distance. I will also show it in mils. And uh, if you need a refresher between mils and MOA, you can uh, review my other video or you can take a look at uh, this screen right now. I would like to bring on this page um, a view that combines the range and the size of the target or the size of the groups. And uh, it kind of puts in perspective what are the different shooting capabilities and in relationship to the target sizes. If you think about how big is the target zone in the upper right, I'm gonna call a six inch target diameter very small, 12 inch it's a small, 18 inch medium, 24 it's a large and 36 very large. So these are the target circle diameters we are going to focus on today. On the left side we have the ranges in yards from 300 yards in 300 yards increment all the way up to 1800 which is roughly the one mile shot. The target size it's uh, expressed at the top in MOA, approximate MOA. These are not perfect MOA, so these are kind of uh, shooters MOA or inch per hundred yards. And you see the target sizes in one third, two thirds, one, two, three, and four MOA. And roughly they correspond in mils to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and 1.2 mils. This will be helpful later on when you realize how big that uh, target looks like at one mile when you look through your reticle. In general, the beginner shots are uh, relatively doable in the 300 yard range. When you become a more intermediate shooter, you are able to hit targets between 600 and 900 yards. When you are actually advanced professional or sniper, you are able to hit targets between 1200 and 1500 yards. And uh, I submit to you that the first round hits at one mile and above are actually the domain of Hollywood. And they are extremely difficult to make in real life. And even when made, they entail a high degree of luck. And we are going to be able to put a number on this probability later on. As far as the size of targets at large distances, you can see Hollywood uh, usually gives us a 6 inch target at 1800 yards, so the one mile shot on a very small target, which uh, in my opinion it's busted, you will see later on. And uh, as far as snipers, they are able to hit fairly consistently in ideal conditions 
one MOA targets up to 1800 yards with the proper caliber selection. So these are not easy shots uh, and require a certain degree of luck and ideal conditions. However, um, they are still doable. Just to put it in perspective a little bit, this is a reticle on a vortex 6 to 24 by 50. It's a mill reticle and you can see the different uh, areas, how large they are. For example, the lower dots at the bottom are 0 0.09, so almost uh, 0.1 mil. And um, this is how um, the view looks through the same reticle for a 100 yard range. You can see that at uh, maximum zoom of 24, you can basically have uh, six, MO, six mils left and six mils right and the same up and down. This is a cleaner reticle, it's an EMRA the 24 times. So all your scope view, field of view is basically 12 mils across and 12 mils up and down. So when you think of a target that is a 0.1 mil, you can realize how small that target is in relationship to this. So now that we cover how far the target is, how uh, small or how large the target is, we have to consider how much penetration and energy do we want to affect on target at impact. And this basically is a function of the bullet mass and the retained speed at impact. I narrowed down the list of cartridges a little bit from the initial picture. However, we still have from 2 to 3 Remington up to 50 BMG, quite a large assortment of uh, cartridge choices and bullet choices as well. If I further clean up that picture and group them, we have at the smaller end the 2 to 3 Remington or the 6.5 Grendel, which are uh, between 5.5 and 6.5 millimeter bullets in diameter. The next step up is the 243 Winchester 6.5 Creedmoor or 308 Winchester. We are now in the 6 to 7.5 millimeter. The bigger boys are starting to come in 300 Widmank and 338 Lapua Magnum and 338 Norma Magnum. These are now 7.5 to 8.5 millimeter cartridges. We have next, uh, we hit the 10 millimeter range with the 408 Shytek and um, other uh, cal 40 caliber bullets. And finally on the right we have the 50 BMG. If we look at the different uh, relationships between um, the elements, we covered everything in black already in the beginning. Um, however, now we need to pick a caliber and a bullet mass to achieve uh, our intended results on target. So once we have a ballistic coefficient, we can then determine which bullet mass in grains and what type of caliber can uh, provide this ballistic coefficient we are looking after. The mass times the retained velocity will give us the momentum, which is a proxy for the penetration combined to the bullet with the bullet type. And uh, the mass multiplies with the square velocity divided by two give us the energy, which is a proxy for the expansion. And I'm not gonna cover in detail terminal ballistics, but this is how you can measure or um, assess the impact on target. The ballistic coefficient is proportional with the bullet mass and also the bullet mass divided by the caliber will give us the sectional density. And the sectional density it's in the end what gives us an insight into the penetration. So why are we going through all this? Because in the end, uh, everything is about trade-offs. Of course, we would like to have a big bullet, supersonic, at long distance, hitting with precision, small targets, in a relatively low-cost rifle and with manageable recoil, and at a reasonable cost. However, this is very difficult to achieve. So I have listed six uh, different uh, cartridges and I am comparing the different weights, uh, ballistic coefficients, muzzle velocities, energy, momentum, felt recoil and cost per round. If we look at uh, different options available for our military, you can see the 308 at the top. You can see the 300 WinMac, which uh, was one of the favorite sniper cartridges uh, until the 338 Lapua Magnum came along. And you can see between the two of them, you gain another 300 meters or about 330 yards or with the same uh, precision. So definitely it has a better capability at long range. And finally, you also have the 50 caliber, 
However, unless you have a very precise 1MOA uh, system for the 50 cal, you can see that in the end uh, it's not the most uh, precise round and uh, rifle combination that we have. Let's go first through the 50 BMG and now we are going to try to answer for every caliber of the 6 I presented in the beginning what first round hit probability do we want at the target distance. We have the 50 BMG which is an anti-material cartridge. This is how, what, how, how it was created. However, more recently and with recent advancements became also used for long uh, range precision shots. This has a ballistic coefficient of 1, um, same muzzle velocity roughly around 2500 feet per second. The energy, however, now we are in the 10,000 foot pounds at muzzle and the momentum of 200 foot pounds per second. Again, even higher recoil and price also around $10. So let's take a look first at the Hollywood version and check out a scene from the movie The Accountant. So Ben Affleck is shooting his Barrett M82A1 and uh, he's trying to hit three consecutive targets, very small, at one mile and they are roughly six inch targets. Looks like somebody's seen too many westerns. Yeah, must be what? A mile out? <laughs> Not on my best day. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, he has done uh, a great job hitting those three targets. However, we'll see if this is actually possible in real life. The 50 BMG, uh, it's one of the most used anti-material extreme long ray cartridges. As mentioned earlier, it's effective for over one mile shots. And if you use uh, the best bullets, 750 grains, they have a G1 ballistic coefficient higher than one. They are also transonic and uh, have about 2,500 foot-pounds of energy at around 2,000 meters. So definitely they are carrying uh, very well that uh, energy at long distances. On the right side, you see a ballistics table, which uh, I have modeled for this cartridge. Um, I use 28 feet per second as a muzzle velocity, so this is uh, one of the best case scenarios. And um, twist rate 1 in 15. And uh, I have modeled for every one of the cartridges later on a target at 1600 meters. And depending on the cartridge, I ran the ballistic table up to 2000 or 1800. So we have enough uh, data so we can see when it becomes transonic. and. Um, we will assess the probability of hit in the next page. So you can see it leaves the muzzle at 2.5 Mach, so speed of sound, and it has in this particular case with a heavy bullet and running it as fast, about 13,000 foot-pounds of energy. As a beginner, you can probably hit uh, targets at 500 meters with it and still deliver um, 9,000 pounds of energy. An intermediate shooter will have no difficulty hitting targets at 1000 meters. Um, an advanced shooter at 1500 or so. And then again, Hollywood uh, tells us you can probably make easily 2000 meter hits with this cartridge. However, you will see later on we are already in the transonic zone. And um, while it still retains a lot of energy, uh, it's uh, much difficult to hit targets at that distance. In this view, we are going to look at the effect of uh, other factors on our trajectories. For example, the wind, the variation of muzzle velocity and the rifle precision. And uh, while we see the sensitivity for all the other ones like temperature, pressure, humidity, 
uh, range inclination um, so up or down shot at an angle heading or latitude um, you will see in the end that in general the most impact it's given by the wind for the horizontal uncertainty and by the rifle so uh, rifle cartridge shooter combination in this uh, case and i modeled all of them for one moa and then also the muzzle velocity so let's start with the probability of hit we are looking at an ipsc target so 18 inch by 30 inch and uh, you can see in this case that it's a hundred percent hit probability at 800 meters it drops to 90% about 1250 meters and it's about 70% at 1600 meters. This is under the best case scenario, in my opinion, where the wind standard deviation is 0.5 miles per hour, the muzzle velocity standard deviation is 5 feet per second and the rifle, ammo and shooter system together generate one MOA spread. A quick refresher on uh, standard deviations, if you have a normal distribution, basically 95% of the values will be within plus minus two standard deviations. So in this case for wind, which means it means that the wind will be plus minus one mile per hour 95% of the time. And as far as muzzle velocity, we will have a plus minus 10 feet per second 95% of the time. So to achieve a 5 feet per second standard deviation on muzzle velocity, it's actually very, very good. So the best reloaders are doing that. And the wind conditions are basically calm wind, um, almost no wind. Also one MOA spread for the rifle, ammo and shooter. It's something that means consistently it's a one MOA shooter system. So. Um, it's also something that within uh, real life conditions um, it's very difficult to achieve but it's definitely doable. If we come back to the probability of hit, why is it not 100%? It's because the different variables at such a long distance are uh, putting us off target. In the upper right we see our horizontal uncertainty. So you see basically that the wind has the biggest effect and the rifle precision uh, has the second biggest effect and all the others have very small uh, impact in missing the target horizontally. If you look at the bottom we have the vertical uncertainty where in this case the rifle precision, the 1MOA, has the biggest impact and then the variation of muzzle velocity is the second one. Again, this is for an IPSC target at 1600 meter and you see the shot simulation. So basically um, the software is simulating uh, different shots for different combinations of all the variables. It's like a Monte Carlo simulation. And then uh, you can see how many of those fall outside of the target. Again, I would like to stress out that this is pretty much the best case scenario in real life conditions. So in order to come back to the different uh, targets at different distances, I have modeled the probability of hit curves for the 6 inch, 12 inch, 18 inch, 24 and 36 inch targets. So in the table in the middle, you see that, uh, for example, the 12 inch target has a 100% hit probability at 500 meters, and then it drops around 15% uh, they're about 2,000 meters. You can see that the 6-inch target drops to 10% at 1,500 meters and um, at the same time the 36-inch uh, stays at 70% all the way up to 2,000 meters on a 50 caliber system that uh, it's uh, within one MOA precision all the time. So if we come back to our friend the accountant he had uh, three targets, six inch each at one mile. And you can see on the six inch curve that the probability of hit is below 10% at that range under ideal condition. So actually to make not one, but three one mile consecutive hits of such six inch targets, um, it's actually a probability less than one in 1000. And therefore I'm gonna call this uh, Hollywood busted shot. If somebody thinks that uh, this is possible, 
I challenge them to videotape themselves doing uh, this type of stunt, three small targets at one mile, three consecutive hits, and then uh, if you are able to do this, I'll actually even may give you a prize money. Next up, we are going to look at the 408 shy tech and try to determine again what first round hit probability do we want at the target distance. We have the 408 shy tech, which has uh, 400 to 450 grains bullets. Um, another step up in ballistic coefficient at 0.9. Um, another step up in muzzle energy around 7500 however momentum at 150 also very good but the recoil also starts to creep up and definitely the cost it's now uh, another factor of two so around nine ten dollars and they are also very hard to find for this uh, caliber i chose uh, the movie shooter and we have uh, now this time it's uh, Mark Wahlberg again with his Shytak M200 intervention rifle uh, trying to hit a small can of stew at uh, one mile as well. Let's watch. Well, he has done a great job. Let's see actually how uh, realistic or practical that shot is. The 408 Shytak, it's one of the best specialized extreme long range cartridges. It was actually purposely designed for uh, long range precision. It's uh, effective for over one mile shots and we have a G7 ballistic coefficient of 0.434. You will see many of these uh, charts. I'm using the G7 BC because um, it's actually a bit more precise in the tables. It becomes transonic at uh, less than 1500 foot pounds of energy at around 1600 meters. If we look on the right, again, uh, the beginner, intermediate, advanced, and uh, Hollywood shots, I would say um, the advanced shots at 1500 meters are uh, doable with this cartridge, however 2000 meters or beyond it's the realm of Hollywood. We can see we go transonic with this simulation at around 1500 meters. On the left you see the same uh, simulation variables with the wind at uh, standard deviation of 0 0.5 miles per hour, muzzle velocity 5 feet per second. And again, I'm modeling a rifle, ammo, and shooter system precision of one MOA. In this particular case, we have for the IPSC target up to 800 meters, 100% 100 hit probability. We are dropping to 90% at 1200 meters, 70% around 1500 meters. If we look as far as horizontal uncertainty, the wind is number one factor followed by the rifle precision. And then on the vertical, they are equal um, as far as impact on the probability of hit. So you can see we have a 60% hit target at 1600 meter for the IPSC. Again, I modeled for you the 6 inch through 36 inch circle diameter targets. And now we are zooming into the 1600 meter or one mile. And um, we can see the 6 inch target again is below 10% of that range. And uh, however, we have if you are trying to touch a 36 inch target, you have a 90% probability at one mile with this cartridge. Going back to our uh, friend who shot 6 inch at one mile, the Dinty Moore uh, can of stew. This is a very uh, improbable shot. Before we go there, let's compare a little bit the 50 BMG and the 408 Shytek. 
So I put side by side the two curves. Just uh, pay attention, the chart on the left uh, has a scale to 2000 meters and the scale on the right 1600. So I grayed out the zone from 1600 to 2000. So um, you can see the 50 BMG, it's a higher uh, caliber bullet. It has uh, also bigger weight and better ballistic coefficient. So in the end, the uh, probabilities of hit are slightly higher for the 50 BMG. However, when it comes to the 6-inch target, they are uh, extremely small on both sides. Going back to the shooter movie, the probability of hitting such a small target, a target at 1 mile, it's less than 10%. I'm being actually generous with the 10%. So I'm going to call this a Hollywood stretch. What is not completely impossible to do such a shot, it's uh, very improbable. Next up is the 338 Lapua Magnum, which is one of my favorite long-term cartridges for precision shots. And they're going to try to answer the same question. What first round hit probability do we want at the target distance? We have the 338 Lapua Magnum. We are now uh, doubling again the bullet weight, so 250 to 300 grains. Big step in ballistic coefficient at 0.8. Same muzzle velocity, more or less. We now are in the 5,000 foot-pounds energy at muzzle, roughly 100 uh, pound-feet per second momentum, and of course higher recoil and also higher cost per round. However, we are now to deliver this energy and momentum at much longer distances and with a very good ballistic coefficient. Actually, 338 Lapua Magnum is uh, one of the best uh, military sniper cartridges available at this point. For this, I picked the American Sniper, which is uh, the one of the scenes towards the end of the movie where he goes head-to-head, uh, -head, so to speak, with the enemy sniper, and he's using a Macmillan TAC 338 Alpha precision rifle. Let's watch. That's more than a mile impossible shot, Chris. It's him. There's a test unit bruiser got eyes on target. This is QRF over. Copy that ET on quick reaction forces. 20 minutes out. He has eyes on our guys. Can you confirm it's him? It's him. Oh, it's him. It's your call, Chris. Quick reaction force is 20 minutes out. Stand the fuck down. If you got it, take it, man. Hang hey, small, Miss Small. Fuck this legend. Thank you, down. We need QRF ASAP. That was a great shot, and uh, this is actually uh, based on real life story. So, 338 Lapua Magnum is being used by the military, and it's one of the best long range cartridges in a portable system and with a relatively lower cost ammunition. It has a great uh, G7 ballistic coefficient, for example, the 300 grain uh, is at 0.418, and uh, it becomes transonic and less than a 1,000 foot-pound at around 1,500 meters.
From here on, I modeled the range card uh, up to 800 meters, which is basically 2,000 uh, yards, more or less. Um, because, as you can see, we are already going transonic around 1,500 and also the energy drops below 1,000. The same environmental, uh, ideal field conditions, uh, wind, very light, 0 0.5 miles per hour standard deviation, 5 feet per second standard deviation for the muzzle velocity, which is very good, and then a rifle ammo shooter system precision of 1 MOA. You can see that for an IPSC target, we have again 800 meter, 100% heat. We are dropping to 90% at 1200 meters. 70% at 1400 meters and 50% at 1600 meters. Again, this is based on ideal field conditions. It's a best case scenario. The horizontal uncertainty is now affected uh, even more by the wind. As we have uh, lower ballistic coefficients, the wind starts to become a bigger factor, uh, sec followed secondly by the rifle. And uh, for the vertical uncertainty, we are uh, looking at the uh, muzzle velocity as the first reason to miss, followed by the rifle precision. I'd like to point out that the range is extremely precise. I have a one meter standard deviation, so it assumes basically la laser ranging all these targets and knowing exactly how far it is. You can see the shot simulation where we have roughly 50% heat on an IPSC target at 1600 meters. Modeling the different uh, circle diameters based on the range to target and uh, looking at the probability of hit, you can see on the 36 inch target we are just shy of 90% at one mile. However, when it goes down to the 18 inch circle, we are actually around 50%, even close to 40. So, this is the 338 Lapua Magnum under ideal field conditions and uh, best case scenario. Also, it's important to understand how uh, sensitive our probability of heat is to the different variables. And uh, I encourage you to read uh, Brian Litz's books. And uh, I'm using the Applied Ballistics Analytics software to come up with all these numbers. And you can see an excerpt from um, one of his books. This is the 338 Lapua Magnum. You see the range in yards. And then uh, how the different hit probabilities for an IPSC target or a 10 inch circle are being affected uh, with a one mile per hour wind and with a precision of plus minus five yards versus plus minus 50 yards. So for example, if we look at 600 yards, we move on the 10 inch circle from 100% to 46%. So just by um, having a variability of 50 yards plus minus uh, cuts our probability of hit in half, even at 600 yards. If you look um, further, you can see now with the plus minus five mile per hour wind, definitely we are uh, on, a six, on a 10 inch target. What was 100%, now it's 76%. So if we misjudge the wind, uh, definitely this will put us off target. I put side by side for comparison the 338 Lapua Magnum and the 408 Shytek. Understanding that the 408 Shytek is a slightly superior cartridge, however, you can see that the differences are not that great. Yes, uh, 408 has slightly better numbers, but in the end, when you put it all together, when you factor in the cost of the equipment, the cost of the ammo, um, I favor at this point the 338 Lapua Magnum over the 408 Shytek, understanding that 408 Shytek has its place and it's uh, being uh, well liked and regarded by many professional outfits. So I'm not trying to discount their capabilities. I'm just saying that you can get close results with the 338. We are going to look at the 6.5 Creedmoor and try to answer the question what first round hit probability do we want at the target distance? Next one, uh, which is also very popular recently and also a favorite of mine is the 6.5 Creedmoor. And while uh, it has lower grains between 100 and 150, it has a higher ballistic coefficient. So as I said, the ballistic coefficient is something we are looking after and we are looking for. We are now at G1 
BC of 0 0.60 or 600, so 600 thousands. Same muzzle velocity, slightly less muzzle energy, slightly less momentum, and also slightly higher cost, around $1 per round or even more. I've seen as high as $2 per round. However, you will see later on that it allows us to make uh, precision shots at a very long distances. So 1,200 yards and up, uh, it's something doable with this cartridge. For this, I picked uh, the scene uh, towards the end of the movie Captain Phillips, where the Navy SEALs are uh, solving the issue and are providing uh, three simultaneous hits at a relatively short distance, but uh, definitely using a 30 caliber cartridge. Let's watch. Yes, sir. Here's the latest from SOCOM. Favor CEO will have until your arrival to negotiate a surrender, but upon boarding you will assume operational command. The White House has authorized any means necessary to resolve this. Roger that. So 6.5 Creedmoor or 264 Winchester, it's a very popular uh, cartridge which provides um, very good uh, long distance performance in an AR-10 style cartridge. It's effective for uh, 1200 and higher meters shots and um, for example the 140 grains bullets have a G7 ballistic coefficient on 0.320. They become transonic and uh, below 500 foot-pounds of energy at around 1200 meters. Uh, one of my uh, favorite rifles in this caliber is the Tika T3X TAC A1. Uh, very good uh, system. I have modeled on the right side, um, as before, the 6.5 Creedmoor. And um, you can see as a, an advanced shooter, you can start to make hits around 1200 meters. However, we are already moving towards the transonic zone uh, beyond the 1000 meter and we are also dropping an energy, so around 500 uh, foot-pounds at 1200 meters. So depending what you need to happen when you touch the target, that may or may not be sufficient for you. The same uh, variables, wind at 0.5, standard deviation, miser velocity at 5 and rifle precision at 1. Again, this is not just the rifle, this is the rifle, the ammo and the shooter. If we look at the probability of hits for this cartridge on an IPSC target, we see again green 100% uh, up to 800 meter. We are going to drop to 90% around 1100 meters, 70% at 1300 and 50% around uh, almost close to 1500. So very, very good performance based on a AR-10 style cartridge, the 6.5 Creedmoor. On the horizontal uncertainty, you see now even higher wind impact, followed by the rifle, and then uh, on the vertical uncertainty, muzzle velocity becomes now number one variable, followed by the rifle precision. You can also see the shot simulation, so uh, at 1600 meters, so the one mile is 37.6 on the IPSC target. Modeling the different uh, circle diameters from 6 inch to 36 inch, you can see that the 6 inch has a 100% probability up to 300 meters, uh, drops to 90% around um, just uh, over 400, and um, it's at 70% close to 600. So, for very small targets, uh, you see the probability. If you want more like a 24 inch target, 
you can have uh, 800 meters 100 percent heat and you can build 90 percent precision just over 1100 meters so you can take a moment and uh, pick your target and your distance and uh, this will give you the probability of heat under ideal field conditions so best case scenario i have put side by side the 338 lapua magnum and the 6.5 creedmoor so that you can see uh, the different uh, circle diameters with the probability of heat i've also listed for each one of these charts the mach so the speed of sound multiplier at muzzle they leave both with roughly 2.5 or 2.4 times the speed of sound and i also listed the energy in foot pounds at the bottom so depending what you need to happen when you hit your target uh, you can make your own determination what works best for you it's important now to look closer at the horizontal uncertainty and uh, the effect of wind error on the probability hit so um, you can see we modeled in our example the 0.5 standard deviation for the wind however the chart um, in the middle will tell you based on how big the wind error is how uh, the probability of heat drops so in this case if your wind error is at uh, 2 miles per hour um, you can see that the probability of heat drops already to 20 percent uh, this is on the 338 lap one magnet on the 6.5 grid more you see that uh, the same 2 miles per hour wind error gives you a probability of 10 percent so why is this important because this means that in this particular case the 338 lap one magnum gives you a better forgiveness when you misjudge the wind so basically it's less affected by wind so this is how you can compare uh, two different cartridges how uh, well they uh, uh, react under the wind next we are going to look at the 308 winchester and 762 by 51 nato round and we are going to try to answer the question what first round hit probability do we want at the target distance in the next category we have uh, somehow the AR-10 related cartridges or the 30 caliber for the um, 308 we have between 100 and 200 grains we picked up a bit of ballistic coefficient at 0.5 about same muzzle velocity if you look they are all roughly leaving the muzzle at about 2.5 mach so uh, 2.5 times the speed of sound we now pick up some more muzzle energy at 2700 foot pounds um, and they can generate uh, a higher momentum at muzzle of uh, 65 foot pounds per second however we start to feel recoil around 15 to 17 pounds and the cost also for higher quality more precision rounds uh, it's higher than the 2 to 3 so it's almost double for this I have selected uh, a scene from the movie 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. You see uh, one of the main characters shooting his HNK 417 308 battle rifle in this uh, clip. Let's watch. That's a mistake. Dude, we kicked their ass. No, 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 no. What are you doing? No, don't do that. Fuck. So 308, it's one of the most popular medium range military cartridges, I would call it. Um, it's usually effective for 600 meters and up shots. Um, however, um, it's not the best long range cartridge out there. It's an excellent medium range cartridge. 
It becomes transonic and less than 500 foot-pounds of energy at around 800 meters, 900 yards more or less. I have modeled uh, again all the way up to 1800 meters just in order to show you the effect of wind as well as the drop in um, velocity and energy at different distances. So you can see at 800 meters we are already close to Mach 1 so we are way into the transonic zone and the energy drop below 500 at 800 meters. Modeling again a rifle shooter ammo precision of 1 MOA, a best case muzzle velocity SD of 5 and a very light wind almost to no wind. You can see that we have on an IPSC target at 600 meters 100% hit probability However, um, once you go to 900 meters, you already drop at 90 and then you drop very fast, 70%. It's at uh, basically 1050 meters and we are down to 50% hit at 1200. On the horizontal uncertainty, the wind now becomes the biggest factor, much bigger than the rifle. And on the vertical uncertainty, we have now... Uh, Many different factors that start to impact our shot probability at 1600 yards. So muzzle velocity, temperature, even the range variation, pressure and uh, um, the rifle precision are now uh, coming into play. This is the scattered shot simulation for an IPSC target at 1600 meters. And you can see in the end it's a 20% hit probability more or less. Modeling our uh, different uh, circle diameter targets from the 6 inch to the 36 inch you see basically that uh, we are uh, in the 90% uh, zone probability for a 6 inch target at 400 meters however it drops very fast from there so this cartridge excels in the 400, 600, let's say even up to 800 meters, but anything beyond that uh, becomes a stretch. Also, it's important to understand that what we've been looking at, it's in a best case scenario. This is another example where you see the different uh, sensitivity for a 15 inch and a 10 inch target. If you have wind plus minus one mile per hour versus plus minus five miles per hour, and then distance uh, measurement precision plus minus 5 yards versus plus minus 50 yards. So you can see that if you have um, wind misjudged or distance misjudged, basically you are not going to hit much beyond 600 yards anyway. And even inside 3 to 400 yards, you have a big probability to miss if you don't have a very precise ranging. So the moral of this story is that if you want to make precise shots, you need to measure distance very precisely, so you need a laser range finder and at the same time you need to judge wind very well or at least get lucky and have very good wind conditions. Putting side by side the 308 Winchester versus 6.5 Creedmoor, basically there is no real comparison. The 6.5 Creedmoor it's uh, very good at longer range distances. So above 800 meters, while the 308 Winchester holds its own up to 600 meters, more or less. That's why many people favor the 6.5 Creedmoor uh, versus the 308 for the long-range precision rifles. Looking at the wind and now trying to understand uh, why the 6.5 Creedmoor is also uh, more effective at longer ranges. It's also because the wind has a lower impact on it. If you look at the scale, the uncertainty on the left, it's uh, 20 some inches for the 308, while it's only 13 inches for the 6.5 Creedmoor. So again, it's um, not twice, but almost twice as uh, better than the 308 uh, when it comes to the wind. If you look at uh, one uh, miles per hour error on the 6.5 Creedmoor, we are at 20% hit probability while the same uh, one mile per hour is at 10 percent on the 308 so definitely much better uh, wind behavior and lower wind deflection from the 6.5 finally let's take a look at the 223 remington cartridge or the 5.5 6 by 45 nato and we'll try to answer the question what first round hit probability do we want at the target distance in the 300 to 600 yards range we have the ar-15 
or the 223 bullets they are between 50 and 100 grains and uh, let's focus on the g1 ballistic coefficient so they have 0.4 ballistic coefficient measured on the g1 scale they are flying at 2800 or higher even 3000 feet per second they have uh, a muzzle energy of 1300 foot pounds or even less for the smaller uh, grain bullets and the recoil it's uh, very very small and they are very very cheap the downside is there is not too much energy and um, they are basically running out of steam very fast if anything i would call these 300 yards bullets for the 223 and maybe 600 yards for the 6.5 grandel for this i picked a scene from the lone survivor movie where uh, the team is using their mark 12 mod 1 spr rifles in uh, 5.56 to engage the enemy. Let's watch. Looking at the 223 Remington, it's one of the most popular short range military cartridges and um, it's being used in the AR-15 type rifles. It's effective for approximately 400 meter shots with the heavier bullets, so the 77 grain Sierra Match King. They have a G7 ballistic coefficient on 0 0.190. However, they are uh, becoming transonic and less than 300 foot-pounds of energy at around 600 meters. So 223 is not really a long range cartridge. It's actually a short, range cartridge with the 55 grains and could be stretched to a medium range with the 62 or 77 grain bullets. Let's look on the right side. I have modeled all the way up to a thousand meters. Uh, the ballistics, however, anything above 600 meters or so, we are in the transonic zone. The energy drops tremendously. So while the modeling uh, tells us some of the shots are doable, in reality, it's very hard to hit anything past let's say a thousand yards with this cartridge and even past 600 yards it's uh, also very difficult to hit targets and even when you hit steel at more than 500 yards it's actually very hard to even hear that you made the hit i have modeled again the wind at half uh, 0 0.5 miles per hour muzzle velocity at five and the rifle shooter ammo precision at one moa and um, under ideal field conditions with this heavier bullet, kind of the best case scenario, we could uh, hit 600 meter IPSC targets with 100% probability. However, you can see as we go past 800, it starts to drop and 
the modeling tells us 70% of the thousand, but realistically we are uh, way uh, past the transonic zone at that point. So um, actually the probability is probably even less. You can see the horizontal uncertainty uh, driven by the wind and secondly by the rifle. And you can also see the vertical uncertainty where the muzzle velocity rifle range pressure and temperature are all playing a factor and this is now the simulation the shot simulation it's a 70 percent hit at a thousand meters on the ipsc target and you can see in the end that majority of the misses are due to horizontal dispersion so basically wind i have eliminated the 36 inch circle uh, target because um, it doesn't make sense for such a small cartridge so um, I topped it off at 24 inch so I modeled the 6 inch to 24 inch circles and the graph now goes only all the way up to 1000 meters and under ideal field conditions and best case scenarios these are the probability curves and definitely it's a very anemic hit past 400 meters from this uh, cartridge if we can look now at the 2 to 3 Remington at 1000 meters and we are comparing the probability of heat and the horizontal uncertainty putting them side by side you can see basically that the wind um, has the biggest impact on the uncertainty so the wind has a very big factor for this caliber when it comes to missing horizontally our target this is another example how important it is to actually have precise range to target and to call wind appropriately. I'm comparing here the IPSC target or the 10 inch target at the different uh, combinations of wind accuracy or range accuracy. And uh, you can see that even at uh, 300 yards for a 10 inch target, if we uh, have the wind at 5 and the range at plus minus 50, our probability of hit it's only 65 percent and at 400 yards it's 30 percent so uh, even at short ranges it's very important uh, for this uh, small kind of anemic cartridge to have the right distance and the right wind calls if we bring now all the elements together we started with the black um, elements from the right with the target distance size type you have seen now the probability of hits for the different uh, cartridges so this will tell you some idea of what type of ballistic coefficient you are looking for. And now you have a better insight into the possibilities for the different calibers and different bullet mass options. I'm going to introduce a few more trade-offs. The higher the caliber, the ammo weight becomes a factor. So when you look at mobility, it's another constraint. The cost, we talked about it, and also the availability. You have to make sure that you have access to the respective caliber um, or bullet components you are looking for. An interesting factor is that the twist necessary to stabilize a certain caliber, a quick easy formula is to divide the caliber by 31. So for example, 0 0.308 divided by 31 times 100 will give you a one in 10 twist. Depending on the caliber, um, we are looking at different rifle weights. So the heavier the caliber, the heavier the rifle usually. Another comp aspect is the barrel length. Usually long range are from 18 inches and up, so 18 to 26 inches in terms of practicality. Of course, you can go even higher, longer than that. The bullet mass and the powder mass in grains give us the muzzle velocity and also the barrel length. It's a factor in muzzle velocity. And then, of course, the bigger the muzzle velocity, the bigger the retain velocity is at target and also as mentioned before the retained velocity at target gives us the momentum and the energy. Also another aspect is the recoil um, based on the rifle weight so the felt recoil is generated about uh, two-thirds by the energy of the bullet going through the barrel and about uh, one-third by the gases exiting the barrel so when you use muzzle brakes, the muzzle brakes affect only one third of the recoil, so they can mitigate some of that, but about two thirds of it um, is not uh, being able to be mitigated by a muzzle brake. This is one case where the rifle weight helps, so the heavier the rifle, the lower the felt recoil. 
So in the end, it's all about trade-offs. So you have to decide, depending on your application, what is the appropriate tool for the job. As far as resources, I mentioned before the Brian Leeds books, you see them on the left. Also the Applied Ballistics Analytics software that I'm using here, it's available. It's a couple of hundred bucks, but uh, it's definitely something if you are interested in long range precision shooting, uh, something that uh, can add value to your uh, toolkit. And also the Sniper 101 series by Tibor Azorus Rex, definitely a very in-depth introduction or even uh, medium to advanced uh, information for the long range precision rifle applications. So thank you for watching. Um, please stay safe and comment, subscribe and share. And I'm looking forward to hear your opinions on these uh, long range cartridges. And um, I'll see you down the range.